Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, I'm not sure what, how to start this on Valentine's. Uh, I'm, there aren't too many people happy in my house, so I, I appreciate you all being here tonight. Uh, normally, we would do this in March. Um, Mr. Miller and I believe that you're, this might be a little bit early to be thinking about seventh grade and after spring break, okay, it's time to start really thinking about Stillwell and, and starting junior high. But there was a request from my bosses to move it up, so we moved it up, and I appreciate you being flexible and being here tonight. So we're going to try to be efficient and get you out of here in about an hour. I'm going to go over some things. I've got a few people I want to introduce. Mr. Johnson, one of our counselors sitting back here in the purple. Uh, Ms. Cooper right here in the red, another counselor, Ms. G is behind her, and this is Ms. Smith, one of our teachers. So they're all going to be here to help support and share some information about what seventh grade looks like at Stillwell. Tonight, uh, we'll go over Planet 7, we'll talk about teaming, we'll go over schedule courses, some activities that are available to seventh graders. Um, Athletics don't start until eighth grade, but we do have some activities and we really strongly encourage engagement in school. Connection to school is extremely important to us. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the elementary visits we've already got planned and some things, some tours we're gonna get started here at Still, which will be something new, um, and then we'll wrap it up. So, whoops. Planet 7. So Planet 7 is uh, week-long activities put on by our West Des Moines police officer, Scott Davis. I don't know if any of you know him, but he runs our Planet 7. Um, I would strongly encourage this activity if, if it falls in your summer schedule. Uh, it'll be the last few weeks in July and the first week in August. Um, and we'll get those dates out. We're just shoring them up here as we're uh, planning these last couple of weeks. It brings in all feeders together. They do team building activities from eight till about four. Uh, if anyone's ever been to Adventure Learning Center in Urbandale, it's a great activity. Um, I've actually gone and done it. They do the high ropes. Um, they'll, learn, they'll do Keller's activity to learn about their personality, uh, what type of people maybe they work best with and some that they might want to avoid. Um, and then they wrap it up on Fridays, they go to Kansas City to Worlds of Fun. Great opportunity to start getting to meet other kids outside of their elementary school and start building some of those relationships because as we get into teams, um, they're not going to see necessarily everybody they've seen in the past. Any questions about Planet 7? I'm going to get this button down right soon. <laughs> So one of, the, one of the special things about Stillwell is teaming. Um, we have six teams, and for, for seventh grade, we've got the E and the R. Our S team would be the new tech team, which is project-based learning. Um, why, why do I think teaming is special? Is we've got, your child's going to be with a set core teachers all year long. So if they're on the E team, they're going to have the same four core teachers. We have planning built in our day for not only their departments, but for the team. So their team is going to meet on a regular basis. We have a six day rotation for teachers to where their teams can meet at a minimum once a week and more if they so choose. It puts a nice little safety net under kids. It also provides opportunities for parents and teachers to partner. I have it highlighted right now. These are their actual emails. So if, let's use my son for example, Cameron were having some concerns or I wanted to know if Cameron were getting all of his work turned in on time, I could type in this email and send one question or one little paragraph and it goes out to all of the core teachers on the E-team plus some of the elected teachers. So it's an opportunity to kind of send an, a one-fits-all email and get responses and dialogue going right away. And again, our schedule is flexible enough for parents to come in and have team meetings. I've sat in two team meetings in the last two days 
trying to just problem solve with parents and their child to make sure they're getting the best education that they possibly can. Um, like I said, S team would be our new tech team, and for those of who are interested in new tech, at the end of this, uh, I'll have a little presentation for those who want to stick around and learn about new tech. But in regards to the teaming, I think it's one of the best things about Stillwell. We have six teams, and it's an opportunity for us to really partner and provide the best education for your child. <laughs> Maybe if I'm consistent. So, uh, Mr. Johnson and I have messed with the schedule. This is my third year as principal, and we have completely overhauled it three times, trying to uh, make teaming still a priority. We want to pre create time for our teachers in regards to PLCs and department time to make sure we're really addressing standards and looking at what we want all kids to learn. We've also started to tweak how long do we think it takes to get from class to class. So when I came in two years ago, we rearranged the building, and in two years, I've moved all but two teachers. Um, so we, and it, just a side note, I had one teacher, I went in two days before school was to let out and said, you're going to move. And she was retiring next year, the following year. She hadn't moved out of that room since 1993. So when we went in to help her move, there were worksheets that were as old as I am. So it needed to happen. But uh, it's been quite a shift for all of us. And one of the things we've done is we've taken our teachers and again, kind of put them in a location where they're all together. So like, for the most part, the E team is together. The R team is together and it goes throughout the building. So, when they're passing through the halls, teacher knows who those students are. And we can try to con control environment and create safety for all of our kids. So we decided after year one, one of the issues we had was because they literally were walking sometimes across the hall, that five minutes was a lot of time to go from one side of the hall to the other. So, we looked at, could we do it in three minutes? And the answer was, maybe, but it's quite a trek from upstairs clear down to the gym. So we settled on four minutes, and some of our students would say that's not enough, and I would tell you they like to socialize. So this is our schedule. We go seven periods a day, and we run a day one and a day two. And when Mr. Johnson talks about band and PE and how we alternate, it, it'll probably be a little confusing and when you come through the registration process in August and get that schedule you're gonna get a or a day one and a day two and it's gonna look a little goofy but in about two or three days of school will make plenty of sense but seven periods we go 46 minutes a period four minutes in between passing the biggest change is right there at the top 7.35, as wicked early for sixth graders who have been used to sleeping in. And I speak, I came from the high school in the first year, I think it took me until February to adjust. Now, a couple things I tell you, I get here at 6 a.m., so the doors open at 6 a.m. every single morning. Uh, we run a sweat that we'll talk about a little bit later, that's an open gym. Our cafeteria is available if kids want to come in and study, but the doors open at 6. Um, we do leave them open till 7 every night because if they're anything like Cameron Boyle, you're going to get home and be like, oh man, I forgot this. Doors are open, come back in, get to your locker, um, get the things you need so everybody sleeps peacefully at night. Our lunch schedule, we do eat brunch. Uh, we started. <laughs> We start at 10.30 in the morning. Um, so some kids, unfortunately, will have 10.30 breakfast. And what I tell you is, our boys will eat in about 30 seconds. Uh, it's amazing. Our, our girls, in the fall, eat a little quicker. Right now, when it's nice and, especially like January when it's cold, they eat as slow as possible. Because at about 10.45, 
We take them outside for recess. Uh, there's blacktop out back. They play football, four square, basketball. We let them burn some energy so they're ready to go for the second half of the day. And we do that for all three lunches. Um, and I have a tiger time, which is right up here to start the day. It's our homeroom. I have an eighth grade tiger time. And when we made the announcement today that we're going to start going back outside on Thursday, which for me, right now, during the wintertime, we do recess in uh, the gym. So imagine 250 kids for 15 minutes. I mean, there's a reason I'm bald. So <laughs> we, uh, we're going back outside on Thursday, and it went over like rocks against the window. They're not excited about it. But, so we do get them out. We get them moving around. And uh, we let out at 235. And we'll talk about some opportunities and things that are available at the end of the day for those who maybe can't pick up at 235. All right, I'm going to give it over to Mr. Johnson, who's going to talk about what are the classes that everybody has to take and then some of the electives or choices they have available. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. All right, well, my name is Mr. Johnson. I'm one of the counselors here. Um, glad to see so many people come out tonight. Uh, just going to kind of go through some of the required classes that, again, all students are going to take. Some of the classes you'll see. There's some different leveling that we have, and that a lot of, a lot of that's going to be ter determined in the next couple weeks and months uh, with your sixth grade uh, teachers, and you're going to have conversations with those teachers at conferences about where they're at with these different uh, levels that we have. But for the most part, there's, you know, the, the general classes are, are, are meeting the needs of, of, of the majority of our students. And so, you know, when we talk about some of these classes that have different levels, we're looking at um, trying to provide support for students who might need, you know, just a, a, additional assistance with reading or with math or anything like that. We just want to give those opportunities. Um, the, the curriculum is pretty much the same for any of these, you know, no matter what level you're at. It's just kind of the pace that they go at um, with these. So we got English uh, as, a, as a top one there, a large focus on, on, on working on those reading, writing skills in those English, in, in those English classes. Science, uh, working on you know, life sciences, uh, they're, they're working also on a lot of the, the we're starting with chemistry uh, and physics in there. And then social studies, you'll see there's a seventh grade social studies, which is our, our general classes. And we also have a foundation class, which is uh, focused on you know, developing those reading and writing skills uh, for, for social studies. We do offer it in seventh grade. There isn't a foundations class in, in eighth grade. So this is just a, kind of a preparatory class to help them, um, get, them get them going with you know, developing those skills again. Um, your teachers, uh, the sixth grade teachers, We'll have, we'll have a form that will, um, if, you're, if they feel like your, your student will benefit from that foundations class, they will, they will give you the form and you, um, it's, it's required to have a parent signature. So your student's not going to be placed into a class without you knowing, okay? But again, we want to offer that, um, that, those options if you are interested in having, you know, or feel your student needs those, those types of supports. All right, and then math is one that we have, we have kind of three different levels there. Our pre-algebra is our advanced class. And, and that's, uh, each of these classes, you know, where, where the student is located is based off of a lot of data that the sixth grade teachers use. It's actually, the teachers don't even really get to decide. There's a lot of data that's used. Now, obviously, you know, if, there, if there's a, a close placement of them, they, we can, they can get some input from them. But there's, the, our, our curriculum director, our math curriculum director here at, um, in the, um, district has set up a you know a, a mass uh, data collection thing that looks at you know, how they're doing on different assessments, how they're doing in their classes to see what level of math there is. And the biggest thing we tell you know parents and students coming in with math is we want them to feel comfortable with where they're at. Okay, I know you know a lot of a lot of parents are pushing, hey, we want we want them in the advanced class, and if they're at that level, great, we want to give them that opportunity. But we also don't want a, a student to come in, especially that seventh grade year, um, where there's going to be a lot of change, a lot of a lot of differences, and come in maybe doing an advanced math and finding out, oh my gosh, I don't, you know, this is really tough for me. And so that's why that's why we use a lot of that data in sixth grade and and, and the, work with those teachers to figure out which level would be best for our students. So yeah, our pre-algebra is our is is considered our, our more accelerated path with with uh, math. 
Seventh grade math is our, our general level of math, and then in, uh, foundations of math, which is called integrated math now, actually, is um, again kind of a um, foundation class for students who you might just need a little bit more support with math, covering the same type of topics that the seventh grade math is top covering, but again, just kind of at a more more broader broader level and giving them those those supports for that. And um, again, your, your, your teacher will talk to you about what math level your student will be at. And they'll, they'll provide that data to support where they're, where they're at with that. And again, we, you know, we want to have a lot of conversations about that to make sure that they're at the right level there. And then the other um, required classes that we have, so the, our first, our core classes, they meet every day. And I'm going to show you a schedule here in a second. Kind of let's see what it looks like as far as what you know what, what it would look like on their schedule. So math, social studies, science, and English, they're they're meeting every day. The rest of our classes um, are going to have the option of well, except for one other one, I'll show you one other one that's meeting every other day, every day. But our other classes are meeting every other day, and that's what Mr. Boyle talked about with the day one, day two. Um, so Pete, physical education is going to meet every other day. Okay, so the students are going to have it one day and then not have it the next. Same with music, and I'll, we'll show you the options of, of music. Now, music is required next year as a seventh grader for at least a semester. Um, but if they are in any support classes, which Ms. Cooper is going to talk about, that's something they can they, they can think about as not not doing. But we want to give them the opportunity to try music. So I'm, I'm going to show you the different options for our music here in a little a little bit. But music is another thing that meets every other day. So they may have PE one or physical education one day. They may and then music the other day. And um, we'll show you some of the other options here. 